Okay, the next section of the instrument that we need to discuss is critical thinking. And the first behavior that we need to talk about is interprets vital signs, um, including temperature, pulse, respiration, blood pressure, and pain. Uh, I think the main thing here under interpreting vital signs, because we know they've collected it, or they've at least tried to, or they were supposed to in assessment, but we want them to notify uh, the provider of any abnormal results. So as long as they uh, notify the provider, I think they have figured out that it is something is wrong, because if they weren't abnormal, they wouldn't have notified them. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Um, is, is reporting, my question is, is is reporting those abnormals to the provider the same as interpreting them? Well, what if we, um, I guess as since we play the provider in the scenarios typically, what if we kind of could prompt them with some questions or even during debriefing prompt them with some questions mm -hmm. to help ensure that they really did realize that the um, f findings were abnormal, that the vital signs were abnormal, um, that they realize that the temperature was elevated or the respiratory rate was elevated, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. And even pull in some of the non-nurse players, non-nurse students that were mm -hmm. playing other roles and make sure that they understood that. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, we probably could catch some of that in the debriefing. And also, if we ask too many questions throughout it, during the scenario, it might kind of stump them up a little bit and the debriefing might be a little bit easier place for them to answer those questions. To, get, to get that connection. Okay, so, do, or sorry, were you going to say something, nope. Julie? I was just going to make sure I had this down. We, we want the student to notify um, the provider of abnormal results and that they're able to answer questions, whether it be within the simulation or during debriefing. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay. And it kind yeah. of matches this next section, um, mm -hmm. interpreting the labs. Again, um, I think I want them to identify the patient has an elevated white blood cell count mm -hmm. when they call the provider. I want them to identify that they have infiltrates on chest x-ray exam. And um, anything else other than that that we'd like to emphasize, I think we can catch in debriefing. I agree. I think as long as they can answer those questions again, mm -hmm. um, we've got the same, the same and, uh, point. And to make those um, connections of how rel relevant that information is. And mm -hmm. I think the debriefing is probably your best place to really get that also. Okay. Okay, so I will put down that they, um, n n they recognize the white blood cell count abnormality, the chest x-ray abnormality, and again, that they're able to answer questions within the simulation or during debriefing. Okay. All right. I think that's good. The next behavior is interpret subjective and objective data. And it really goes along with the first two um, components that we talked about of recognizing that relevant from irrelevant and the one piece of uh, data that I think is really important along with that is the lung sounds. You know, can they mm -hmm. not only uh, identify them but, you know, see w which one of those are important. You know, one thing we could do is um, when they call the provider, which would be us, to um, let us know the patient's assessment, we could ask them what did their lungs sound like if they don't tell us, and mm -hmm. to see if they say clear, or if they just say bad, or if they actually give us crackles or rails or something like that, and that will kind of allow us to really get that information and make them be sure that they, that's what they heard. Even if they need to check with another student, the other student nurse to say, did you hear this? Yes, mm -hmm. I did, fine. Um, I would be okay with that. I am too, to get the point for that. To get that point. Well, in the second stage, they do the simulator has some increase in um, crackles in the lungs. So, mm -hmm. being able to recognize why that's important and matching it with the uh, uh, fluid balance. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could get some of that part in the debriefing as well mm -hmm. too, and pull that out if they don't pr present it mm -hmm. to us, which may which may happen definitely. Yeah. Okay, so I have identifies lung sounds, able to answer questions. Does that kind of cover mm -hmm. what we talked about? I think so. All right, well then, let's see. The next behavior that we have at our critical thinking is formulates measurable priority outcomes. So, I, you know, I know we split our groups in half, and the first half 
stays out of simulation and does their care plan and the second half does it afterwards, how can we get the group who does simulation first to give us the priority outcomes? I think, you know, they've all been, they've all been presented with the scenario and with the order set. Mm -hmm. So I think if we could just take a moment with them in the sim room prior to it beginning and say, after you've read this scenario and after you see this set of orders, what do you believe are the priority outcomes for this patient? Before you've even seen them, you can mm -hmm. establish That's true, the these, top three. These are senior level students. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready to go out to preceptorship um, or actually might be coming back from preceptorship depending on if we're doing accelerated or traditional students. But either way, they should be able to start, okay, I've got report and kind of start thinking about those things in their head. So I'm, I'm okay with that, giving them that chance to do that. Mary Beth? We could also have them put it on a whiteboard if we wanted to, have them put that up there. Um, I like having maybe just an overall discussion though, but uh, not just including the nurses, but also the patient and you know, the family member having before they step into those roles so they're all on the same page. I yeah, think that's a good idea. That is a good idea. Make everybody do that before they go, go into their roles that they were given. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. You think that's clear then for that on the worksheet? Okay. I think so. So the next step flowing right from that would be, are they performing outcome-driven interventions throughout this scenario? And I think for that, in, in relation to our specific scenario, I came up with they need to be able to apply the oxygen. Did mm -hmm. they apply the oxygen? Are they elevating the head of the bed? You know, we start mm -hmm. the scenario out with the patient flat and the right. patient's in some distress. I want to know that they recognize, you know, if I raise the head of the bed, that's going to assist this patient. So are they elevating the head? Did they administ call to get the nebulizer administered um, and administering the Lasix okay. in order to help with that fluid overload? Mm -hmm. Um, those are all outcome-driven interventions, and I think. On our order sheet, do we mm -hmm. also have that they need to start IV fluids too as well? Yes. Initially, do we not? We do. So we want them to go ahead and hang those IV fluids too? Yes. And then I think one thing I noticed, like I think we did this intentionally too on the order sheet, is we put the nebulizer at the very bottom of the orders. So we, I kind of want to see that they're doing that early on and not going down the orders in order, in order mm -hmm. and that they're looking and prioritizing the orders. Good. Um, do you guys agree with I that? I do, I do. So I'll put, we want them to apply the oxygen, get the head of the bed up, get them their treatment, and kind of do those in a, in a relatively rapid, rapid. manner mm -hmm. since they can't breathe, um, to get those IV fluids hung, and then after we, because then we give them the Lasix order later, mm -hmm. and so then to get that Lasix initiated uh, when the order is given. Does that sound correct? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, we'll get that down here. All right. Okay, the next behavior is provide specific rationale for interventions. Um, and I think that is, you know, pretty basic that they should be able to, you know, answer the patient and or the family member, um, you know, answer their questions. So, you know. So if I, they I'd say, why am I getting that Lasix? Mm -hmm. Or they, c they can give them a reasonable answer for that. Right. Yeah. I think that. Okay. So That's maybe that they can answer questions to in the, within the simulation and even maybe during debriefing if we don't mm -hmm. get some of that out of them? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think the next one kind of is very similar to that. It evaluates interventions and outcomes. Um, I think we'll see some of that because they'll, they'll have done a care plan. Mm -hmm. um, out in the group and we can look at what they've written there but then in the debriefing we can kind of go through and look at do, and truly evaluate what they did what what went well what could they have done mm -hmm. do they need to reevaluate um, what they did and mm -hmm. and come up with new interventions that sort of thing yeah and bring it back to those outcomes that we wrote on the whiteboard yeah. bring it, did you meet these and if not yeah. why and how would you change your plan of care right because so. perhaps one of their outcomes was an education one due to the patient's history of smoking with oxygen on and things like that. Mm -hmm. And maybe they never did get to that one, but they could talk about it well. It was an acute situation and this is something we would have done before mm -hmm. discharge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then evaluating interventions and outcomes, do you think that we should then have them come back to the whiteboard where they had written their outcomes prior to the simulation and assign those outcomes either met or not met? 
and then explain why they gave them that assignment and then how might they change their plan of care to get the patient to meet those outcomes. Does that sound okay? I think that's really a good way. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. So then for the last piece under critical thinking reflects on the simulation experience. I was thinking again um, having them come together as a group and really spending some time discussing um, the strengths, what did they do really well, um, the weaknesses, what areas could they improve on, and, and how they feel about the simulation experience. I think it's also important that, that everyone participates that, uh, as a group. So that we elicit some information from each of the members? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I will put down that um, we want them to include strengths, weaknesses, and that each student participates in order to get the point. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and that wraps up critical thinking. Great.